Hi, I'm Christy, and this is Today We Tried, a parenting podcast brought to you by Kaluga, where we talk about big moments in parenthood and break them down to make them feel less daunting and more doable. I am a mom of three and chief parent officer and general counsel at Kaluga, and I am super excited to be here today with Joe Piazza, best-selling author, award-winning journalist, and podcast host of Committed and the new podcast Fierce, which highlights the fierce women that history has undervalued. I'm very excited for that. And she's also a fellow Philadelphia mom, and she has two kids. So we've met before for coffee and now are not next to each other. (laughs) No, no. Right before before we got locked up, you were like one of the last people that I saw in the world. But really excited to have you here today, Joe. We're going to talk about like letting go of expectations during this time and how you have been making things work while parenting during COVID. So in terms of background, you are home, right? Like your whole family is home right now. We are home. We are all home in our house in Fairmount. Um, It's me, my husband, our six-month-old and our two-and-a-half-year-old and and our wonderful au pair who literally arrived here five days before lockdown. That's so wild. Yeah, because I remember when we met, she was like just newly there. Brand new. And yeah, she got... She got to go out one night in Philadelphia and then that was it. Then they said no more going, they said no more going out, but no one was allowed to ever go out ever again. So, but I don't know, I honestly don't know how we would do this without her. I, I have enormous sympathy for all the parents that are doing this without any help because my husband started a new job also a month before lockdown. I have one book in editing, another book I'm supposed to be writing and for podcasts I'm working on right now. So I just, yeah, we, I think that we would probably have gotten divorced. (laughs) But yet still have to be under the same roof. So yeah, 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 exactly. We we would be be living here, but we would be divorced. Yeah. We would have already gotten the papers signed. So were you working from home though, before this started or how were you making your work work before? Yeah. So I've worked, I've worked from home on and off for the past, since my my first child was born. So I've always had an office that I can go into. And so, and I can go up to the iHeartRadio offices in New York and I go up there to record a lot for the podcasts. But I still have a really flexible schedule so that I'm working from home most of the time. So I'm, and I'm also used to working from home. I'm used to working in sporadic spurts. I'm used to like trying to get things done during naps and with a giant ruckus surrounding me all the time. So that's not as strange for me. And my husband has also worked from home for the past three years on and off. So we're also used to being in the same space together. We're not as used to constantly having like Zoom call. Like we're used to leaving the house for meetings. So we've really had to figure out like who gets to have a Zoom call in the one quiet room in our house. And also I hate listening to his Zoom calls. Like I just, it's like listening to the process of someone else's work. Just, it feels icky. It's like, I don't want to see how your sausage is made. I want you to tell me about like the nice day that you have later on. Yeah, I, don't wanna, I don't want to hear the nitty gritty of it. It is really funny. Well, Ted and I just started, you know, we started working together like six months before this all started. And so we had had those realizations of like what kind of work people you are. And it's just funny to hear him in work mode. And I was still like getting used to that. But it's now we actually we were working sitting side by side with each other in the Kaluga office. And now we're much more separated. So like that was the switch, which is the kind of the opposite of what most people do. But now one of us is working upstairs and one of us is with the kids essentially all day. Yeah, yeah, we're I mean, we're as far apart as we could possibly be. So I'm on the third floor and Nick is on the first floor, or even like as far back in the backyard as he can be. <laughs> um, just so that we can't, we can't hear each other. Yeah. Um, and that's what makes it work for us. Yeah. Well, you also are trying to do creative work during this time, which I think yeah. is a whole different ball game. Yeah. So that part of it is impossible. So I was talking to my co writer today because I'm writing a novel with another writer and I was like I can get my nitty-gritty work done Mm -hmm. like I can I can script a podcast I can I can do voiceovers but when it comes to sitting down with a blank page and trying to write like a book chapter my brain is a fog yeah right now and I think I think I hear that from creators all all over the place that they're like I just can't my imagination is broken right now Mm -hmm. yeah it's just I feel like in some ways it is 
it feels like when I was on maternity leave, like when you mm-hmm. have born where your brain is just not able to concentrate. And yeah, it's, it's extended insane. baby brain is mm-hmm. what it is. And now, and for the men too. And it's funny because I think the men are having a harder time with it, but women are used to it. And so like, I just, I just power through it is I'm like, no, you've got to write 2000 words today, man, like crank it out. But I think men are having a hard t- harder time with it because they've never had baby brain. And now for the first time in their life, they're like, Jesus, that's hard. <laughs> what is happening? Okay, so since you have, you know, you've had some practice, I guess, beyond some of us with like operating within this crazy environment. So I would love to hear, you know, starting with some things that are working for you right now, whether they're new or, you know, what you've always done working from home. But what is kind of working for you right now as you're parenting during COVID under these conditions? So I have to hide from my children, um, which I didn't really have to do before. And I, I think it's because I left the house when I had important meetings, or if I had to like really buckle down and write, I'd go to a coffee shop. They want to be on top of me all of the time. It's, I mean, Charlie will actively say, he's like, you're a mountain and I'm climbing you. And I'm like, that's, I don't even, I don't think that's nice. And he's like, no, you're Mount Kilimanjaro. You stay still. So I, I pretend to leave in the morning, I make a big like show out of it. And I'm like, it's time, it's time for mommy to go to work. And I pretend to go out the front door. And he'll go like, he'll be like, go into the bathroom or something at that point. And then I hide, I hide upstairs in the office. He does not do the same thing to Nick. Nick can be sitting on the couch, like within Charlie's eyeline, and he won't bother him. He's just like, well, daddy's working. And I'm like, well, I work too. And he's like, eh. (laughs) So you say, so do you, when you go out and he's in the bathroom, then you sneak upstairs. So do you not come back downstairs then? Like, do you bring supplies? So yeah. You- yeah. So I don't come back downstairs until I'm ready. Like, I, I, so I have lunch with them. I come back downstairs for lunch and I put Charlie to sleep. And then I go back upstairs again until I'm ready to come down for the end of the day. And he's also in quarantine. He's gone from like a two and a half year old to a three-year-old essentially in quarantine and that's a big leap like for parents of toddlers now like it's a big change so he's smarter now than he was in the beginning of quarantine and he knows how to guilt me he's like oh are you done your work and then he does like air quotes around work and I'm like what do you think I do and it's funny too because he can identify my job and not Nick's because Nick is like a sustainability consultant saving the world and no one knows what he does but so I asked Charlie, I'm like, what do I do? And he's like, you're a writer. And I'm like, what does daddy do? And he's like, no one knows. Oh my gosh. I just love an almost three-year-old giving you air quotes. Like that yeah. is, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah. He's just like work. So yeah, so I, I have to, I have to hide from him. But I, the biggest lesson that I've learned from this is like that, and he was not overscheduled because again, he's still little, but he was scheduled and he is lear- like his brain has exploded in quarantine. He is learning so much more from being a free range child and like not being forced to do things that like now he's out. He at- he's asking us to spell everything for him. He is like he's like, can we please count to fifty? Like it's like his brain is yearning for knowledge because we're not forcing it down his throat. And I think that is such an awesome lesson to learn and to keep with us when all of this is over. Yeah, for sure. It is really great to follow their lead. Let them be the one kind of in charge of that. Okay. So another thing you have here is not being too attached to your routine. Yes. So I think a lot of people at the beginning of this were like, you need a routine, create a routine or else it'll be chaos. But I feel you don't want to move too far in that direction. No, no. Well, and like I said, it's like, he is really enjoying being a free range kid. And it's like, in, yeah, in, in the beginning, we were like, oh, you should you should try to do an hour of like schooly kinds of things and then an hour of exercise and then an hour of free play. And now we're just like, you do you, man. And when we give him that freedom, that's when he does the coolest stuff. Like that's that's when he gets so excited about random things. I mean, he's gotten really in, I mean, he's always been into geography in a weird way. I remember this, like maps, you said. Yeah. He- super into yeah yeah awesome. yeah he's really into identifying obscure islands so he's like we're gonna go to Socotra and I'm like where is that and he's like it's off the coast of Yemen yeah obviously <laughs> obviously 
but now he's he now he's really into the planets. And we I don't even know if we've ever talked to him about the planets, but he was just like, Yeah, it's like he's like, Today we're gonna talk about Jupiter. I'm like, Great, that's yeah. wonderful, Charlie. So yeah, so just not being attached to it and also like making not even being attached to my routine. Like while I am trying to hide from him and stuff, I'm also realizing that there's so much fatigue from being on Zoom calls and meetings all day. And so when I'm starting to fade. I'm trying not to be too attached to my to-do list. And I'm like, just go take the kid for a freaking walk. Go for Just go for a run. Like we, we, we're right next to Fairmount Park, which you can really get into some socially distant areas in the woods there. And so we've been doing runs in trail runs in the woods and we won't see any other humans. And I'm like, yeah, when you start to feel like crap, you know, he probably feels like crap too. So go, just go take him out and don't worry don't worry if you do not complete your entire to-do list. I've gotten so much less structured about checking everything off and just being like, there's another day of quarantine. Tomorrow's Groundhog Day. Don't worry right, about it. Right. <laughs> Get another chance. Yep. It'll be all the same. And you talked about this a little bit, but getting outside. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And this yeah. this is what saved us during during all of this. And we adopt this it's kind of, it's like a Swedish, Danish, Scandinavian approach to parenting, which is there's no bad weather, only bad clothes. And so no matter how crappy it is outside, we go out. And we also, we try to make sure that everyone that is around Charlie doesn't give negative connotations to rain. Like my mom at one point tried to teach him the rain, rain, go away song. And I was like, stop it. <laughs> and, but he's like, he's really embraced it. So it's like when it start rain, starts raining, he's like, it's time for a rain walk. We're going to go jump in some puddles. And I'm like, we sure are. And yeah. so it's good. I think it just, it changes everyone's mood and mental health to just get the hell out of the house. Yeah. And jumping in a puddle is the best. It's the best. Like he loves it so much. And in his, in his mind, he's like, he's like, look, there's a seahorse. He's like, I see a beluga whale in there. And I'm just like, great. Like, it, like I said, I think his imagination is just exploding. That's awesome. Yeah. I jumping in a puddle just always feels like you're breaking a rule. Like even yeah. to me as an adult. So I'm like, this is awesome. Yeah. And, go out there and-, well, and it is, it's actually a rule that my husband loves. Like, cause he hates like messes and so he's just like oh and I'm like do it jump in the pot <laughs> okay so those are good tips on what is working things that maybe you tried and didn't work or just you know what should you avoid <sighs> zoom school man it just we hate zoom right like no one no adult I know like zoom we're not we're not happy having all of these zoom meetings and frankly I think most of our zoom meetings could also be phone calls so let's just not stare at each other's faces all the time so if we hate it kids hate it like at least my kid hated it and he he liked it we would do cert we did a little bit of circle time in the beginning and he liked to sing the songs and stuff but like he's bored and trying to force the zoom school on him. It was just like, it's trying to force a screen on a kid that doesn't want to screen. And yeah. when I stopped to think about the absurdity of that, <laughs> After, I mean, yeah. we spent so much time trying to wean them off screens and now we're forcing a screen on them. And he's little, it's different if you've got a kid who's already in first grade or even kindergarten, but he's still a baby. He does not need zoom school. And so we, we just stopped. We just gave up, but we do do other kinds of school, like other video school. He loves the Philadelphia Zoo Zoo School. They do it every day at two o'clock. It's a Facebook Live. Every zoo across the country is doing some kind of zoo school, and so we'll tune in to things like that. But school for the like Zoom for the sake of doing Zoom, it's just it's not worth it for us. Yeah, my kids are in they're in their three four year whatever years before pre K, and they have a, cir- a half an hour of circle time and their teacher started giving them the option to extend it by 15 minutes for like the first year students. And both of them were just like, no, I'm going to go ahead and leave. Like they were not interested in it. It's enough. Yeah. And that's fine. It's totally fine. Yeah. Okay. So number two you had here was setting high expectations for my husband. Yes. But this, and this is something that I learned. I wrote this book called how to be married which turned into my podcast committed. And we traveled around the world interviewing people in different cultures about what it takes to be married and how do you do this weird marriage partnership thing. And one of the things we learned is that Americans have some of the worst expectations for their spouse, like of couples around the world. Like we think that they need to be our soulmate, our best friend, the best sex we've ever had, our therapist. And in other cultures, they're like, my spouse is just my spouse, man. Like they're 
they're my business partner in this thing called marriage and raising children. And I love them. And, you know, it is also a romantic partnership, but they are not my end all be all. And I think that cutting your spouse some slack, especially in quarantine and expecting them to be the person that's going to manage all of your anxiety about this crazy messed up situation. That's a, that's a big expectation, you know, expecting that they're going to pick up all of the slack, like cleaning up an entire messy house. Like our house is disgusting right now. That is a high expectation and expecting when you have to be face to face with them all the time, that they're going to be happy all the time too. So I'm just trying to not have any expectations for what our relationship is going to be and let every day come come as it will and letting, letting go. And, but then also the thing that comes with that is trying to be actively grateful when he does nice things and notice them. Like, so we have these reusable like plastic water bottles so that we're not destroying the earth since Nick is actively trying to save the planet. And I never noticed before that because I leave them all over the house. I, I drink them and leave them all over the house. And I never noticed before that Nick fills them back up and puts them in the refrigerator for me. That's so nice. I know, but I just never noticed. It was like a fairy did it or something. And so the other day I noticed and I made sure to say thank you. And he was just so happy. It was as if I just bought him a car. <laughs> he yeah. could, could not have been happier that I noticed and said thank you. And so I think just trying to be as kind as possible because all of us are are feeling out of sorts from this. Different times too. I feel like, you know, it's very day to day what my mood is and mm-hmm. your mood isn't going to necessarily match with your partner's mood either. And so like giving that space instead of trying and like projecting my own anxieties onto him. So I'm trying to avoid. Yeah, that. exactly. Exactly. Well, and this would be the time, right, in quarantine when you're with each other all the time, that if we already have too high of expectations for our spouses in our culture, like suddenly they're the only other adult you have. Yeah. Yeah. They're the only other human. So like then our expectations are even higher. So yeah, just just loosening that. It's like just kind of letting go of so many things. And I hope that, I mean, because this is a terrible, terrible situation, but I, I hope that the little things that we do learn from this, we try to hold on to once all of this is over. Yeah. All right. And the last thing you had here was trying to check everything off your to-do list. Yeah. So do you still, you still make a to-do list? I do. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I mean, I am a big, I write a to-do list. Like I physically write it every single day, every night before on a piece of paper and because I just really like crossing things off, I get a real kick out of it. And usually I'm pretty good at getting it all done. And I used to beat myself up when I didn't do it. And now I'm not. Like I said, I'm just like, I'm just moving it on to the next day and it's going to be fine. And you're also realizing the world's not going to end. Like at the end of the day, I write books and I make podcasts and I'm not a brain surgeon. And if I don't get this thing done, no one's going to die. Yeah. I think though, I was curious if you were still writing a to-do list because I think I actually need to start doing that again. Like I, I kind of stopped that completely, but I do feel like if I could at least have everything written out, it might help me to focus my brain a little bit. It a hundred percent helps me focus. And I put little things on it. Like I, I start my, I organize my Gmails by like, I star things that I have to respond to. And so I'll like write down like seven stars on my to-do list to be like, get to seven of your starred emails that you have to get back to. And I put down, I'm like, go for a run, do 10 minutes of Peloton weights, things like that. Or just, or even like just responding to a single email that I've maybe been putting off. Like, so I put little things and big things on it so that if I, if I can't concentrate on anything, I can cross off a little thing and it feels like a win. And so then I can maybe tackle the big thing. That's great. You got to build up to that. Awesome, Joe. Well, this is all super helpful. I really appreciate it. And we will be back shortly to have you answer five fun questions. Excellent. Hi, Christy here, popping in for a minute to talk to you about Kalugo. I'm excited to share that our award-winning compact stroller now comes in five new core colors, olive, deep blue, rose sparkle, black floral, and black. They're beautiful and they're here to brighten your day, but you don't have to take my word for it. Check them out on our website, www.highkalugo.com. Now back to the show. 
Christy here. I am back with Joe, and she's going to answer five fun questions for us. So, Joe, are you ready? I'm ready. Let's do this. All right. Number one, a parenting moment you're proud of. So Charlie got some Tinker Toys the other day, and he actually asked to build a windmill. Like there was kind of there was like a windmill kind of structure on the Tinker Toys box, and so we built this windmill. And after it's built, then I had this idea that I was going to teach him the science of wind using my hair dryer. And so we just we spent like an hour adjusting the windmill's blades to show how wind works from different angles and what kind of wind does what to the quote unquote wind turbine. And I mean, I just felt like a scientist after that. That is a huge win. That's it's awesome. a huge win. I feel really good about it. What's a new fun thing that one of your kids is doing? So B, I mean, B's adorable. I feel like I talk about Charlie all the time, but she's, she's six months old. She does baby things. She is spinning in a circle. She's doing that like army crawl where she spins in a circle on her stomach, which is cute. But Charlie is, well, one, he's speaking in a British accent because our au pair is South African and Charlie has decided to respond to her exclusively in a British accent which is adorable. But he's also asking us to spell everything that we say. So we'll say a word and he's like, you got to spell it. And he's psyched. He, and he just like loves the concept of spelling. And then he gave his sister this nickname, which is her name's B, but he now calls her Jim Bum Bum. And he won't let anyone call her anything but Jim Bum Bum. <laughs> that's awesome. Okay, that's fabulous. What is a favorite family tradition? It's one of my husband's family traditions. And it used to just be a Christmas Eve tradition that we've now made a once a week tradition. They're big fondue people. And so now we've decided that fondue, in addition to being the possibly like germiest spreading meal you can have together, but it also just makes everything feel festive. So fondue once a week. So fun. Do you have a, like a special fondue pot? Oh yeah. 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 We, we, we go <laughs> hardcore fondue and we experiment with different kinds of fondue as often as possible and we also it's a nice way to get rid of leftovers because you can put anything in cheese and it tastes good so we're just like oh we've got this asparagus from our csa box that we never used it's kind of gross looking but put it in cheese yeah it's delicious okay so number four what is your favorite piece of parenting advice my favorite piece of parenting advice is to model patience for your children my husband and i are the most impatient people that that you've ever met. I mean, and also, and just like, we have like, we have like these very like visceral emotions to things. We're like, oh my God. And and Charlie mimics them. Like we watch him mimic us. And so we actively try to just practice patience with everything that we're doing and it works. And we do the belly breathing with him. We're like, all right, time, time to breathe in your belly. And, and if anyone has a toddler, you know that patience is like the only thing you want them to have. Like you just want patience and you just want them to like stop using that annoying whiny voice. And so, yeah, by us modeling it to him, it's gotten so much better, especially in quarantine where it's very easy for us to be impatient about absolutely everything. Yeah, I need to try that for sure. It's hard. It's so hard. And number five, what recommendation do you have for listeners? Can be anything. Oh my gosh. I've, I'm reading so many good books right now because I go to sleep at eight o'clock because there's nothing else to do. I mean, yeah, I also feel like I need more sleep right now. Like yeah. that's you know, how my body is coping yeah. with the stress. I mean, I don't go to sleep, but I get in bed. I'm like in bed by eight o'clock. And sometimes we watch a TV show. We just started Run on HBO, which is great. Um, but I'm reading Emma Straub's All Adults Here. I just finished Janelle Brown's Pretty Things, which I really liked. And I'm reading Jennifer Weiner's Big Summer, all of which are great. And yeah, it's it's nice to, I, I get in like an hour and a half or two hours of reading every night before I go to bed. So I was not doing that pre, pre-COVID, pre-quarantine. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Joe. Before we go, will you please tell our listeners where they can find you? Yes. It's Joe Piazza author. And my new podcast, Fierce, is on iHeartRadio and Apple Podcasts or wherever you get podcasts. And Committed is in its third season right now. And we're finishing it up right now from from quarantine. But it's got five more really great episodes of the season. It's really good. Yeah. And I'm so excited to hear Fierce. It's good. It's really good. You know, the surprising thing about Fierce is that moms are telling me they're listening. It's a podcast about 
you know, forgotten women in history. And moms are telling me that they're listening to it with their little girls, like even little girls, like as young as four and five, and that it's really inspiring to them. So that's exciting. Awesome. I'm going to have to listen to it with Lark. That's great. Awesome. Well, thank you. That's all we have for today. Uh, you can share your thoughts on today's episode. If you head over to Kalugo's Instagram, which is at hi Kalugo, H I C O L U G O. And if you have a question or topic you'd like us to cover, email me at CPO at hi Thanks Joe. Thanks. Bye. Our music was provided by Sound Planet. Our awesome producer is Aaron McGregor. I'm Christy from Kalugo. We'll be back soon to share more about our adventures in parenting. Until then, remember, you got this.